Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Demartini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody, welcome. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. Thank you so much for all of that. Um... I just want to say I've got a very special show for those of you today. Um, you know, someone asked me a few minutes ago, they asked me, like, you're coming up on like 10,000 shows or something, Pat. What is it that keeps you going? Um, and there was somebody that said something to them in reference to, uh, well, after the seventh show, you know, you kind of go into that, what is it, like in marriage, it's that seven-year slump, right? So they were asking me about it, <laughs> and I and I think I said something like, actually, I don't remember my seventh show. But my answer was, why is this so fresh and new to me every day? And it's not because of me. It's because of all of you as listeners, and it's mostly because of the people I get to speak with and get to share a journey with. And Sherry Clark is one of those folks. Now, by her own right, you know, she is somebody that came out of the gate besides having a profoundly incredible career as an executive in the technology world, but is also somebody that is seeing the power and the purpose of the message of courage to be seen. Now, when you have a brand like Courage to be Seen and you're stuck at home, you have to know that the topic for today from her is how to be visible when you're stuck at home, even if you want the courage to be seen. And before I talk with her, I just want to say, for many of you who have sent me text messages and Facebook messages today, uh, it is true. Our hearts go out for Senator Elizabeth Warren, who lost her brother today to COVID-19 and you know how gracious is she and her message and it is like so many people right now you know we don't take it lightly although we do have fun on this show and on this network but we don't take it lightly but we also bring powerful powerful messages and today if you're finding yourself suddenly stuck and Sherry's going to laugh about this but suddenly stuck in your house, nobody to play ping pong with, and you're somebody like me, what do you do to get those endorphins rolling? Sherry, it's great to have you. Well, hey, it's great to be here, uh, Dr. Patton. 10,000 shows. I mean, what uh, what a milestone that uh, is going to be, even if... Uh, it seems like you don't remember the first ones, but uh, I know you've been on the air for a long time and bringing great messages to a lot of people. Thank you. So that that's that's really cool. They're trying to figure out. So here's what they're, thank goodness I don't have to worry about this. Maybe they should call you and get your help, right? Because you're, you're the technology genius. But they were asking me how, what, what, when I thought that would be. So I said, well, I don't know. I, I, and, you know, you can do the math on it, right? If you just briefly take a look at how many hours I did, when I started and all that. So they figure I'm somewhere right now in, 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 in the 9,000 something range. So they're, they have pinpointed that my 10,000 episode, maybe we haven't confirmed it, maybe the 4th of July. Now, that would be cool. Wouldn't that be cool? Now, I don't know how they're calculating it, but have you ever had people in the room? Now, you, you know this, right? Have you ever had a team in the room and they've got this idea and they go back and they're calculating it and there's five people and they come back to you with five different answers, right? 
Oh, absolutely. It happens all the time, actually. It seems like counting would be something easy, but uh, you know that there were some weeks that you were probably sick or on vacation or somebody uh, filled in for you. So to truly count the number of shows over that many years is actually probably uh, quite impossible, um, especially because technology has just changed so much. Like right. today, you know, all the shows would definitely be recorded and in- indexed and in an inventory, but they probably weren't when you first started out on the radio. So um, you, you'll have to just do your best best guess and uh, pick a significant day to have the celebratory show. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that because here we are, right? And so we're talking about today, right? How to be visible when stuck at home. And so for you, you've created courage to be seen. This is one of your primary messages in the world. And you're talking about this and helping women all over the world with this. You know, this is your coaching platform. This is ACE is what it's about. And here we are today. And we're in a world now that has changed almost overnight, right? Oh, absolutely. Overnight. Would you, would you categorize it like that is like almost overnight? It, I mean, you go back one month, nobody could have described the world that we're living in today. Because people wouldn't have believed you. If you were, let's just say you go back. Let's just go to the beginning of March, right? And so people knew the virus was kind of going around the world and people were getting sick and, and there was a certain percentage dying. And so everyone kind of knew. But at the beginning of March, you would have not have said at the end of April, all the schools would be closed. Most people would be working from home. We'd have the highest unemployment, you know, on record since the depression that you would have in the United States, not a single practice or sporting event going on, all the concerts closed, all the restaurants are takeout only. Like you could not have predicted the change that's happened in our world so, so fast because no one would have believed you. No one would have said, oh, come on, people aren't actually going to do that. And when you think about courage to be seen, I think it's very important because especially for women, women have have struggled with having the courage to be seen in the office the way it is. They've had trouble speaking up in meetings and having their voices heard just under normal working uh, circumstances. And now when you put everybody remotely, it makes it so much more difficult. It's hard to connect working remotely. And it just adds to it, I think, especially for women, all people, men, all people from work, but especially for women, this is a challenging time. I think so too. And, you know, we were, let's talk about this because gosh, you know, somebody called me, what did they call me the other day? Me of all people, you ready for what it was? Because I gave a statistic, they call me Debbie Downer. It's like, I'm not even Debbie, but you get the point, right? And what I said was I had a moment and I had a moment, not as Dr. Pat and the Dr. Pat show and Sherry Clark, radio host but there's another side of us that we live in right there's this other world you're a mom you're also an executive right i have an organizational background i do organizational work and i made a statement on air and it was just a one-liner and i said something like yeah i don't know we're going to get back to normal this reminds me of 1991 And I said, this reminds me of when we had the repeal of the psychological contract at work. We are in a world where we get to be so creative, so innovative. What's changing is the norm of how we do things. But you're in a technical field and technical people have led the way for innovative ways to work. I mean, you I mean all yeah, have. we're we're really lucky that technology is is where it is today. Because if this would have happened, you know, let's say five years ago, we wouldn't have had as many tools as we have to stay connected. And it's so critically important for people to have connection. Everyone would say, you know, food and water, shelter. That's the that's our basic needs. But in reality, human beings need connection. And if we don't have it it puts so much stress on on our lives. So we went for a walk last weekend and uh, through around our neighborhood and we were with my son and we were walking and it was amazing how many people we came across that were sitting in their driveways with other people 
sitting like, you know, 10 feet apart from each other, having like, you know, just, just sitting there. And we stopped to talk to a couple of them and every single one pretty much said the same thing that we're just tired of not seeing anyone. We're tired of not being able to have a conversation that we just couldn't take it anymore. So we decided to do it in the safe manner where they're sitting a ways away across the driveway, but able to at least see each other and just talk. And um, it, it just goes to show how significantly this has affected people. Now, luckily, you know, I live here in Texas where our houses are, are spread apart and we have lots of room. Um, I can daily go and walk and um, I don't have to necessarily worry so much about social distancing just because the neighborhood that I live in and there's big bike trails and there's not that many people on them. Um, and I know you can't do that in, in cities and things, but, but people need the connection. They need to be seen and with technology, we can do it over video so easily. Almost every computer now is sold with a video camera. Um, I've been doing like Zoom calls with, uh, with friends from across the country. Um, and it's fun. It's fun to connect in that way. We did uh, with some family members um, Zoom trivia on, uh, on Sunday. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's nice to be able to see people's homes and their kids and but we wouldn't we wouldn't have that uh, if it, if this would have happened let's say five years ago because technology is just available everywhere. At the same hand, thirty seven percent of employees say when they work remotely, it limits their visibility. So even though we have the tools and the technology, that doesn't make it that you're just instantly visible. It's very easy to be hidden while you're remote. It's very easy to feel more isolated and that nobody understands you or your point doesn't get across uh, when you're suddenly thrown into working remotely and like you haven't had any training or, or coaching on how to do that effectively. You know, th th what you're talking about is so interesting and so important. Um, you know, I'm watching some of the most incredible ideas surface. And I'm wondering, is, is it because I live in a bubble sort of, right? And we've been remote since 2003. I mean, we were doing podcasting in 2003. So this, the technology has caught up with us now so that we can take our technology, plug it into a Zoom, and voila, there you go, right? But what are you seeing in people at the workplace? Are they adjusting? What would you say about it? My, my sense is, and I would like to skip break and just go into this. A friend of mine said he had the best, it wasn't a Zoom meeting. It was some, some other internal thing. He said, we had the best blah, blah, blah project meeting that we've ever had. And this was a technology company. And he said, people showed up like real people. And I said, oh, I'm talking to Sherry tomorrow. And I'm like, is this part of what you are talking about in ACES, about a new level of authenticity? Are you seeing that? Well, I think it depends. And people are adjusting. So here, I don't know, I think we're in week five or six okay. of the stay at home, stay safe uh, um, message, right? The business that I work in is deemed essential in one of the 16 critical infrastructures of the, of the United States. So, so my business is technically open. Um, and we have part of my team goes into the office every single day and work because some of the lab equipment and the things that we need is in the office and you can't do it from home. Um, however, the employees that can work from home, you know, we do have them work from home. And so on the engineering team, some people work from home um, almost every day. Some people work in the office every day and some people go back and forth depending on the, on the day. So I think it, it does depend if you're the type of person that you're just counting on running into people. Like you, you got your work done because you would run into people in the office, in the break room, or you just walk over to their desk. That's not, that's not working anymore. Um, you, you, cause you can't count on that because you're not going to just run into somebody from, uh, going from your kitchen to your office, right? That, uh, 
if you're embracing technology, then um, you can make this work. Like I was, I stopped by the labs to see how they're going the other day. And one of the technicians had one of the engineers on a video call. I don't know if it was FaceTime or what they were using on their phone and showing them like, you know, what they were seeing in, in the lab and on the O-scope and having a conversation of what they should do next. So they were embracing the technology we have and, um, you know, kind of filling that, that gap. So if you're, if you're doing that, you might actually be working better than ever in this because you do work more Hmm. efficiently um, or can work more efficiently. If you are trying to stay working the same way you've always done your job, (laughs) you're probably struggling right now. Or or let me ask you this question because, you know, part of what, part of what your message is, is about courage. And I want to ask you, from your experience, are people truly admitting the way they are? Or, or what is your sense of how people, one, are handling this, but how real are they being about how they feel themselves? Because I got a dose of this about myself about four days ago, right? Yeah, what are you? Well, s- I don't think we're used to admitting how we really are, and so this what working remotely is magnifying that, and people aren't admitting they're not used to it, so it's not any easier to do it now. I, I read an article the other day, which was you know, and then I'll tell you about one of my personal experiences. This uh, this lady lives in Colorado in a remote cabin, uh, in this remote kind of area I think it's like a a thousand acres and there's like 50 cabins up there and and people you know live up in these in very remote areas and so she's been up there like 38 days and hasn't talked to anyone else she has a ton of food in her freezer Um, but at the same time the the neighborhood they connect over through I think next door and so at least talk a little bit they have wi-fi and that type of thing well someone was going to go into the town and so said hey anyone need anything I can get it for you and no one was responding. And so on Easter, she said one more time, hey, you know, if you need something, just just let me know. I'm going to go into town. And this woman who hadn't seen anyone in 38 days goes, well, you know what? I'd love some fresh fruit um, if that's not too much of a trouble. And so then as a couple of days passed, she tried to cancel her order saying, no, no, you know, like, don't, that's just too much work. The roads aren't good. You know, don't, don't worry about it. And um, the lady, though, she goes, no, I'm happy to help out. She gets some fresh fruit and takes it to this cabin. Um, the lady was out hiking, so like leaves it at the door. And so when she comes up to the cabin and sees the fresh fruit, right, she was just started crying. And because she was just so touched that someone cared about her and, you know, wanted to, to help out. And, and I think that's how we are. And I can say, you know, I've been there. When uh, my son was born, um, you know, he was in intensive care for 63 days. And it was a very lonely time. You, you go through a lot of emotions when you have a child in intensive care like that. And, um, you know, people would ask me um, how he was doing or what they could do to help. But of course, I never said anything. You know, I don't need anything. We're fine. Um, one day on a, sa- on a Sunday, I come home from the hospital after visiting with my son and some of my friends were at my house and they were cleaning it. And um, it was so emotional for me that uh, I remember just going to my bedroom and crying, right? Um, they knew I needed help and they didn't know what to do, but they knew they could come over to my house. They, they came over when I wasn't home. My husband let them in. Um, he would let them clean. I would have never let them clean, right? Um, I know what ask. you mean. I, I'm totally right there with you. That is like, I don't know what it is about me, but I'm kind of like that. That's like my worst nightmare until after they're done, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I told them I didn't need anything and I never would have let them, but they knew I needed it. So they came over and helped. And I think that that is how we naturally are. We yeah. we don't admit how we are. And so so I worry about people working remotely now. Like if they do need that connection, um, so I think as leaders, we have to we have to reach out more. Um, I try to call people on my team more often. I do some little video messages and I send them to them because we we have to get better admitting and being authentic to ourselves, and which is one of the key messages in Courage to Be Seen. 
Um, and if we can't do that, then, then it's very hard, especially at this time, to, to be seen because people don't know how you're doing. It's very easy to fake it right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I, um, some time in March, the end of March, I don't remember the exact date. Jessica's got it. Um, I had this feeling, I don't know how else to talk about it, but I had a feeling and I remember getting up. I don't do this that often. You know, you're my role model for this but this is not me. I'm, I'm not the one that gets up and gets in front of the camera and gives people video messages every day, right? That's a real stretch for me. Um, I do Facebook Live, I love it. I love being on air with you, but for me to get up and do a message, it's unusual for me. Uh, usually by the time I'm done with my day, I have a friend said to me, Pat, we've tried to count how many words you say in a day after you're done with your day. But this day I woke up and you're going to see the video soon. I knew I had to do something and I thought about you and I was thinking about and people don't know what I know about you and your journey and you've shared this on shows. It's, it's so touching for me. And and I woke up and it's just something about seeing your face because, you know, you and I have worked together. We worked on the website. We worked together, right? We're colleagues in this. You know, you do so much to help people. But I woke up and I sat in front of the camera very spontaneously and I did a recording. Six minutes. I didn't know it was six. That's short for me. Six minutes, turned it off, buried it somewhere. I don't know where I put it. But I didn't know that I would be doing what we're about to do. And we are very, very clear that we've worked too hard to help people have a voice, an independent voice. You see, they've had the courage to be seen like you talk about. So you doing this radio show and being here and being on air and doing the video, that does take courage. And there are a lot of people that are going to lose their opportunity to continue their podcast, to continue their YouTube. There are a lot of people that are going to lose that. See, we don't talk about that. So I woke up the other day and I said to Jessica, we have got to do a crowdfunding initiative for even the people we don't know. So we're getting ready to launch that. And Jessica stumbles across this six minute video. And she says to me, how did you know in March? And I think it was something you said a long time ago. And you talked about the courage to be seen and how sometimes we teach something that we're meant to learn. And I have stayed so long in the shadows, but admitting like the story you shared, admitting how you feel about something is one part of it. But the other part of your story I wanna ask you about is the action part, because that's also part of courage to be seen. What are you seeing? How are you seeing? What is your perception of the action in the world today? I, I think the action right now is mixed, right? Because a lot, it, it's such unprecedented times, people don't know how to, how to react, right? If you do any studying kind of a how your brain works and how you make decisions, um, you know, I was a little fascinating, like really you make a decision based on how you predict or how your brain predicts the outcome or the future is going to be. But when things are changing so fast, we don't know what the future is going to hold. So we actually like stress out just having to, to make decisions. So I think a lot of people are, are trying a lot of different things and you can really see leadership be magnified at this time because we need people to step up and lead and, and help people through this because people want hope, but, but a lot of times they don't know what to do. So they follow leaders. 
And then you also see people that are supposedly leaders really struggling um, because the, the, just the stress of what's going on and maybe they don't have strong leadership skills. So either they're not saying anything and like you just don't even see them at all or you hear, you just see and hear them say stuff that just doesn't make any sense. So, so we get that in all different levels. So that's at the leadership level. You get the same thing with individual contributors, right? Some days people seem really good and seem to have everything together and everything is going well. And then uh, you might see the next day they say something that doesn't make sense or they just don't act like you normally would expect them to. And, and usually that means there's something else in their life. Either they get just too much stress or there was something that has nothing to do with what you're, you're actually seeing that is causing their behavior to be kind of irrational in that moment. So I, that's what I see. I see it all over the place. The good thing is, though, you can take um, some control and you can at least, you know, do some things to make it make it better for you. It's not like you have to just be um, something that's like blowing in the wind, right? We, we, we can have a say in this, at least in the realm of our, our own lives and what we decide to do on a daily basis. And that's what you're going to talk about when we come back from break. Because, you know, I, one of the things that I'm struck by is, and one of the reasons I wanted you to come on and talk about it, because, you know, your message is about courage to be seen. And those words are so powerful, but underneath them, you know, there's a lifetime, there's an entire journey of what that means. But when we come back, you're going to tell us how we can take the steps to be seen, even if we got our pajamas on like that like at least i took a shower today just saying (laughs) let's take a short break when we come back more about sherry clark but please go ahead and that is true the website is courage to be seen there are ways for you to find out about sherry uh, about her coaching programs about what she's passionate about and you're going to be hearing a lot more about sherry because i'm going to make her work with me again so let's take a short break we'll be right back Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Potasic has a special gift for everyone out there. To receive three chapters of the Knowledge Book as a special gift, send your email to mmjp99 at gmail.com. That's M as in Mary, M as in Mary, JP99 at gmail.com now to receive this fabulous, fabulous gift of the Knowledge Book. What is a brilliant culture, and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio, the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. Did you know that when we talk about the Earth's ecosystems, the most important ecosystem has been left out? You, we created the ecosystem approach to recapture human potential. Find us at theecosystemapproach.org. Join us every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time and 4 p.m. Eastern Time for the Ecosystem Approach Show with Jason and Patricia on TransformationTalkRadio.com. A word of caution, if you prefer the status quo and you are not interested in improving every aspect of your life, this book will trigger the shift out of you. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens is available now. Author Colette Steffen brings the powerful knowledge and life-changing energy and empowerment from the radio airwaves to the pages of her new book. To get your copy in paperback or ebook, visit thetruthisfunny.com today. Some people dream of freedom before they know it even once. What happens when we find ourselves in unimaginable freedom? Retired, children are grown, we've moved on from caregiving, and don't know what to do with all that time you never had before. Well, it's your life. It's up to you now. On the hit new show, Fresh Courage, it's your time to shine with host Sharon Rolfe on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hey, everybody, welcome back. 
I'm so thrilled. We are talking about Courage to be Seen. And for those of you, you can find out about Courage to be Seen, Sherry Clark, and her radio show. Uh, you can go to the website, Courage to be Seen. You're also going to be able to see and listen to and watch past shows um, and what she's done. But the message that you know Sherry brings to the world, it's very consistent and it's very powerful. And when you think about courage to be seen, think about your life. Maybe not so much. She's here. I'm here. We're on, we're on radio. We're on our ETV channel. Not so much about that. But think about what's available to us today. The steps that we can take to be seen. And if you're having trouble with this, get a hold of Sherry. Because that's what she does. You know, it is a process, and she helps people with that. But today, we're talking about what is happening, but what we can do. I shared something earlier, and I, and, and I'm, I know you're going to take us through the steps. What I said was, something remarkable has happened. Something that people predicted would never happen, ever, 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 ever happen. And what it is, is in 1934... This guy out of Akron created, I think, created something called Alcoholics Anonymous. And out of AA became O-A-N-A-N-E-A, all of the A's, everything you could possibly, all of them, 12-step programs. And the greatest argument, Sherry, that ever happened at any of these leadership groups for these programs was we will never, ever, 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 ever do anything digitally. So guess what changed? Online meetings everywhere saving lives. Everywhere. Zoom had to accommodate by giving special passwords. Everywhere now, all over the world, people, hundreds of people on one call from all over the world. Imagine that. So here's my question. This was a bold move for people. What can people do to be seen? What can you help folks with today? You know, um, one thing that I have found fascinating in my career before we get into the actual steps is I've mentored quite a few women that work at other companies where they work full time from home. You know, like every call that we get on um, is that them, you know, working from home and their team is in a different location. And I've always found that fascinating. So they're used to this. Well, this is all new for us. You know, I'm used to be able to see my team on a daily basis. Um, a lot of people, this this isn't necessarily new, and that's why technology, you know, has been evolving. So, so that that is just kind of a, an interesting thing. Now, why we have to operate though a little bit differently when we are remote and we want to make sure that we're seen. First of all, like you said, you can have a lot of people on these calls and not know it. You can't just look around the room and see like who's sitting, you know, in, in a chair. It's very easy when you have lots of people to, to not notice like who the participants are in a meeting. You also might not even know the meeting was scheduled because you, you don't walk by the conference room and see people there and go, oh, hey, I think I should have been in that meeting. Why was I not invited? Because you just miss out on those kind of nonverbal uh, cues. And then lastly, body language can be completely missing in a meeting. So, so that's why we have to operate a little bit differently. And so that way we can be seen, we can be heard while we're working remotely. So let, let's go through some of the steps that you, that you can do. Um, the first one is you have to embrace technology. And I know people don't like that. So the first part of that is if you can, you should be on video. That, uh, but if you're going to be on video, that means, yes, you do have to get up in the morning. You have to get dressed. You have to take showers. You have to get dressed. You can't just, um, you know, lounge around on, in sweats all day long if you want to make a good impression on, on video. And people, they like that part of working from home. Like, oh, I don't have to get ready and I can, I can lounge. Um, but then they go, but I don't want to talk on video then. So you have to, you have to embrace technology. And I think you should get ready every day anyway, um, even when you're working from home. Um, I still like to work out first thing in the morning and get ready for the day. It helps me kind of mark that this is, this is today. 
So if you can't um, get on video for whatever reason, or it's not right, um, you know, you do want to talk on the phone. So a lot of times I'll get questions from my team right now. And if I can, I, may, I try to call them back to give them the answer rather, rather than write back in email. That way you have that little bit more of a personal touch. And I would reserve email, texting, messages, um, Slack, all that kind of stuff. I would try to limit it. I'm not a big fan of it anyway, um, but I think it, it has a, you know, doesn't allow you to connect the same way that phone calls or uh, video does. So whenever possible, choose those um, and then just limit the stuff that has to go to email or text messages. Because you can't make a good connection over trying to text someone back and forth. I don't know how it works at your at your company, uh, Dr. Pat, if you guys try to really uh, focus on phone calls versus messages. You know, we're doing better. I am the I have to tell you I'm the greatest offender. And um and I don't do a lot of texting, but I do a lot of messaging in Skype. And I, I do that for several reasons because my producers are pretty much running shows, right? I mean, my folks are pretty much doing exactly what you said. I mean, Linda will be the last one to send you a text message. She will call you. You know that, right? Linda will pick up the phone and say, Sherry, right? That's, That's Linda. True. We could all learn from Linda. Yes. Yeah. But right. we're, we're doing less of that. Like right after this, we're all having a meeting, right? Not a text back and forth, but let's get together and take, let's take a look at what we're going to do. So I'm trying to do more and more of that because so much is misunderstood in texting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so then the second thing when you are attending a meeting that I'll, I'll tell you is make sure you speak up because like I said, it's when there's a lot of people on a, a meeting, let's say it could be video or it could just be on a phone call. It's so easy to forget who the participants are. And a lot of times, you know, people are multitasking because you can get away with it. No one can see what you're doing. And you might be reading something on the side and just miss part of the meeting. You can't let that happen. You have to, if you're going to attend a meeting, you have to speak up. You have to participate. You can't wait for someone to ask your opinion or wait. Oh, yeah, uh, Dr. Pat's on. You know, what, what's your opinion? You know, don't do that. You, you have to. Um, speak up and unfortunately on the phone sometimes you interrupt people now I'm not saying you want to interrupt people but don't be scared to do that you have to be heard and that's just kind of part of the the life that we're in and we have to get used to that yeah the uh the third thing I'll yeah. tell you is yeah. make sure you schedule your meetings in advance oh big one that uh, we wait too long, you know, that we just say, wait till we're completely ready. And then people's calendars are full or you just forget to schedule it. And then too much time passes before you can actually uh, get on people's calendars. So you want to make sure you're thinking ahead and get those meetings on the calendar. So, so they happen. Um, the fourth one, which I think most people don't really think about when you want to be, visible. Be a connector for others. Don't actually focus on making yourself more visible, but maybe you know like there's two people at your company that um, somebody's working on a project and someone else could contribute or might have a good idea. You know, put them in touch with each other. Find a way how you can help other people in your company connect and you'd be amazed that does come back and provide you value in in the future it's not right now it's kind of almost like making deposits um, that will benefit you in the future but when you focus on helping other people who might be struggling to make a connection um, you know other people that might not know something's going on so if you hear something on one meeting then you know make that suggestion oh you should talk to bob or you know reach out and send an email to the two people and say hey you guys should connect on this project because i think you know, either the work you're doing is overlapping or someone did something very similar a couple of years ago. You know, Sherry, uh, one of the things I love about when you bring these uh, messages forward, and this 
And if people have never listened to your show, they should really do it. Courage to be seen. It's right here on Transformation um, Talk Radio. But one of the things I love is, and one of the most captivating shows is the one that I actually pre-recorded when you were talking about goals. And what I love about your message is not only do you, you know, are brilliant at scanning the environment, but you come back with solutions that we can use in our everyday life. And it really leads me to, you know, the next question, which I think has been a challenge for me personally. I think it's a challenge for others. And that has to do with courage. Uh, but even more so and tied into that is one other thing that you and I have talked about. Women, I find, and I don't like to stereotype, but we have a hard time. What did, the, what did my mom used to say? We have a hard time tooting our own horn, so to speak. Acknowledging our accomplishments. We're really good at acknowledging for other people. But it's more difficult, one, to acknowledge our own. And even when other people compliment us or say something, right, it's hard to receive it. But isn't that too a form of courage to be able to do that? Oh, absolutely. And it's so important. And that was one of the things I was gonna I was gonna say is is even more important now is you have to find ways to make sure people know what you're doing, know what you have accomplished. And we minimize that, especially women. You know, we just say, oh, it was nothing or just doing my job. Or we believe that if we do our job, everyone's going to recognize it. Everyone's going to see and know that we did it. Unfortunately, that's not the way things work. We have to be comfortable, you know, saying, yes, I did that. I, I wrote that report and it was great. Um, I, I know this is an area that I have to work on. When I've gotten awards in the past, I have even wanted to tell people about them. I've wanted to, to minimize um, the fact that they were. My boss was coming, flying in from Atlanta for an award ceremony. And I struggled to admit why he was coming. That uh, when someone said, so, hey, why, why, why is he coming? And it's like, uh, he's flying in because I'm getting this award. It, it was like the hardest, hardest thing that... Uh, uh, for me. And so we need to do better, uh, especially at women. So at this time, you know, there's ways you can do that easier. You can, like, some people would find if I send a weekly summer email, this is what we're doing uh, to your boss or to, to, you know, team members. And that way you can highlight what you're doing. It doesn't have to only highlight what you're doing. You can highlight what others on the team are doing also. But that, that's one way that you can do it and get used to saying, this is what I've actually, you know, gotten done. Um, and then when people recognize and say you did a good job, don't deflect it. Don't say it was nothing. Just the best thing to do is say thank you. It right. seems so simple, but it's so hard. Right. Right. You know, um, it really, what that brings up for me, as I think about this, what it truly brings up for me is looking at, you know, how we then embrace and bring courage in our lives. Um, for those of you just tuning in, Sherry Clark is joining me here today. She is the host of Courage to be Seen um, and is a, has a fabulous coaching program, keynote speaker, and way more. Um, so please go and check it out, courage to be seen.com. But let's take a moment to talk about courage because I think we're starting to see different forms of courage. And what I mean by that is I, sometimes I believe we have a view of what courage is. You know, what is it like Superman or Iron Man or Wonder Woman courage? That. But I think there is a new courage emerging, or at least maybe we can't see it as courage. How do you describe courage? So, so you're right. There is the, like, there's the courage that we see right now across, let's say, the hospitals, you know, the doctors, the nurses, the people working on the front lines, right? We call that physical courage. They're actually doing something because, you know, it can be scary to have to go to work right now. Some of the people, like, let's say they're checking you out in a grocery store. They could say, I'm fearful for my health. 
I'm fearful I'm going to get sick. I'm going to bring it home to my family to uh, maybe they're taking care of their parents in their house or someone with it with a um, some kind of a health condition that they're they're worried about. So so that's physical courage, and that's the Superman kind of courage that we so often think about um, when we hear about courage. But there's a lot more levels or a lot more pillars to, to courage. I think and probably the one I've been working the most on is emotional courage, right? This is yeah. the this is the courage to feel. This is the courage to kind of connect with uh, your emotional side and admit, um, like to be authentic, admit how you are and really embrace the feelings that, that you're having. Um, that I've been doing some uh, research on, you know, leading with emotional courage, how um, the, some of the best leaders are also some of the most courageous when it comes to the emotional side. And it's really fascinating work. And hopefully, uh, you know, as I continue to, to learn more and more about this, it will allow me to be a better leader. Because if you can connect emotionally and have the courage to admit that you have the, emo- the emotion, have the courage to admit that maybe you're scared right now or that you don't have all the answers um, is really, really powerful. And a lot of people can connect, you know, more to you as a, as a leader and probably will follow you because they know you're being authentic and you're being truthful. You know, um, what I think is so fascinating to me is, and and you don't always get so much of this um, if you're t- plugged into the TV 24-7, but I'm watching what innovative things people are doing. You know, the, if I didn't have my phone with me to take a picture, but I was out and I was walking And we don't live in, you know, our our homes are not crammed, right? But they're okay, enough room. But beautiful place to walk here. And there was this moment where one woman was on one side of the street. There's another woman on the other side. And obviously their dogs, when they walk, they pass each other and their dogs connect. And if I had a camera, I, and I, honestly, I didn't bring my phone because I didn't want to take calls on my walk, but I regret it because there was this beautiful picture of the long leashes, you know, that they have on their little teeny dogs, right? So there was this giant, like 20 foot leash, and it was a little white, small dog. And the other one was a black lab. And these two dogs saw each other, ran to the middle of the street on this really long, I don't even know what these, they're not leashes, they're extendable things you walk your dog with. And there was this moment in the street, right, because the people didn't, they're keeping their distance, where you could see these two dogs come together. It was the most precious thing I have ever seen. And the and the owners didn't pull it back, right? Right. And so you saw the 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 owners start to get closer and closer together, but never separate the dogs. And it was such a loving, touching moment. You know what it meant to me was this is also a time where we can still have love and respect in our hearts as well, even if we're afraid. Oh, absolutely. And that, you know, the, the dogs are just showing that we need that connection. They need that connection too. And uh, we, uh, despite the fact that we have to learn how to live in, in the world and stay safe and stay healthy, um, that we, we can't live in fear in our houses. We have to find a way that, uh, that allows us to be connected in whatever way that is to be safe. Um, in this world, you know, it's, it's, it, we, we can't hide from this. We have to find a way to go forward and have the courage to, to do that. Well, I know we've got a few minutes left and um, every day is an adventure, isn't it? Oh, I believe life is completely an adventure. That's it. That's, is. Uh, you, you know, that's uh that is my, my belief that uh, uh, life is meant to be, be lived. And um, I, uh, 
I love to travel and like, it just, it's amazing me to think of that. I don't know when the next time I'm going to travel is, you know, I talk with my team in China and go, I don't even know when the next time I'm going to see you is. Um, and that's really hard for me, but, uh, yeah. um, this, this is a, a, an amazing adventure we're on. I know by working together, we're going to get through it. And, um, I don't know what exactly that path's going to look like, but I do have, have faith. We're going to figure it out. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm seeing the most innovative, uh, and they get these from motorcycle. I don't know if you know this about motorcycle riders, especially in the Harley. I need to mention the Ducati people. But one of the things that we have are these these bandanas that come around our heads, and they go back, and they t they're tight to your head. And you usually wear them under your helmet. Well, what what folks are doing because and they're they're so creative i mean they're pieces of art now people are wearing them so we we started to uh create like a little contest for the best most face creative mask. face mask and we're, we're trying to do it on on social media so people can vote um but there are some of the areas that you mentioned that i i struggle with every day right and I think it's okay to be that, isn't it? Well, you, you have to remember it's progress, not perfection. Yeah. Right? That uh, we, we don't necessarily have to even have all the answers, but we have to have the courage to take the step in the direction that we want to go and figure out, I'll figure out that second step later. But you have to keep going. You have to keep trying. Some things aren't going to work out and that's Okay. And that just means you learn that that's not the path to go on. And maybe you need to be a little bit more to the right. But uh, that, that would be the challenge that I would give to anyone is, is don't, don't just like right now say, I'm going to just hole up in my house. I'm going to eat a lot of food. I'm going to curl up on the couch and watch TV. You know, like that's not, this is not the time that you want to do this. This is the time to, you know, use all this, as a catalyst to, to make some improvements, to drive your life forward. I, I don't know what it'll look like. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Who knows what the news will say, but, you know, focus on today, take some action today and things that you want to do, and then say, I'll figure out tomorrow, tomorrow. And some things will go well and some things won't, and you're going to have to make some changes, but it's, it's all an, uh, really an exciting opportunity if that's how you want to put your mind to it. I, I love it. And I'll tell you, you know, you are one of those folks that is inspiring all of us to really, really step it up when it comes to courage to be seen. Uh, Sherry, thank you so much. Personal message, what would you like to leave us with today? So thanks for thanks for having me, Dr. Pat. It's always a pleasure to, to meet with you and, and talk with you. And, you know, I just want everyone to know, you know, as I have focused on allowing my true authentic self be seen, my life has just gotten so much better. It's so much more joyous. I, uh, I just have, you know, so much more fun. Um, it seems actually a lot simpler. So that's why I created Courage to be Seen. I wanted others to, to feel the same way. You know, I encourage you to check out my website, couragetobeseen.com. My contact information is there, uh, information on me and my programs. Uh, let me know what, uh, what I can help you with, and uh, we can include it in future uh, topics for, for podcasts. I also you know, post daily inspirational messages on Facebook and Instagram, so you can follow me there and get kind of your, your quick daily you know, inspirational uh, quote. For, and, uh, and then I invite you to... Um, if you like this, to make sure you subscribe because uh, that way you won't miss future shows. Yeah, and I want to thank the folks that have been watching us. Thank you so much for that, Sherry. I want to thank the folks that have been watching us. Thank you so much for all of that. Uh, Candace, I want to thank you so much. Uh, and Candace was chatting with us as we went and she commented, Sherry, that she has had the courage to do her interviews and also to create her music. She just let me know that she emailed me a song uh, called You Are Not Alone about these current times. So you could see, Sherry, how you are touching so many lives. And Candace, I want to thank you for creating such beauty in the world. And thank you for chatting with us throughout this show. You are a shining light and you are demonstrating what it means to truly have 
the courage to be seen.